how much time did it set you back um, for going to Munich, Germany when you were supposed to be in Austria? Um, that actually was only about a 20 minute out of the way from where we were. That's wild. Europe is yeah. so different. <laughs> yeah. Um, but we did hit a lot of traffic. Once we started getting on that way, we did hit a ton of traffic, um, which set us back pretty far. Mm-hmm. And then uh, what else was that? There was another, oh, when you took the wrong Innsbruck, once we got into Innsbruck, there were two signs that. that said the same thing and we took the wrong Innsbruck. <laughs> um, so that's how we were alone at the roadblock. <laughs> I think we have, we've been very consistent. If there's a fork in the road, we have been known to take the other. So like the, <laughs> the wrong, wrong fork. <laughs> it's, it's consistent throughout the entire race. You see it in every single episode if you're driving. It's like, oh, Toulouse, Toulouse. Here we go. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like Innsbruck, Innsbruck. We're going to go this one. Like, <laughs> lots of forks got it got it um were any of the challenges harder than your audition together as ram cheerleaders <laughs> hmm. oh, that's a good question oh great question it's been a while since i've felt the nerves of a rams audition it's different yeah it's different it's at least I felt like in all the challenges because I mean yes yeah, some of them were dancing but a lot of them weren't necessarily in our wheelhouse of what we do professionally um so at the end of the day we just didn't want to disappoint each other and let's make us some time and let's do well mm-hmm. for Rams audition I have to be the best dancer in this room so I make this team like there's like you know what I mean like there is no finishing last it's like no you're just cut you know yeah. and, and every round is is, is stressful so I would definitely say becoming a Ram Street leader is the harder than the challenges, to be honest. Um, Because we just have a different standard when it's dance and we both dance and we consider ourselves very good at it. (laughs) You want to be the best. And he wanted to be the best in the room because he was fighting, you know, Mm -hmm. um, a stereotype, right? That was predominantly female. And he was fighting that and trying to break that barrier. Um, For me... I was a returner. I was returning to the team that I was on that there's that little, like, you want to flex to everybody coming in. Why you're, <laughs> you're yeah. returning, why you made it in the first place. <laughs> Got it. Got it. Nice. All right, then good to know for future cheerleaders that at least it's, it's not as bad as that. <laughs> Quentin, yeah. You were a side coach, it seemed, at least for like the yodeling challenge. Um, I it gave me a little bit like princess and tiaras when you saw like the moms on the side. <laughs> were you doing that for any other challenges to cheer on Maddie? Or yeah. <laughs> we were this is gonna sound so cliche, but we were each other's biggest cheerleaders because at the end of the day, again. When you have the pressure of that roadblock, Maddie said it best earlier, you feel like the, the pressure of the race is on your shoulders. Mm-hmm. So we don't want, I don't want to mess up the race for her. She doesn't want to mess up the race for me. So how can I create an environment that's going to keep us both cool, calm, cute, and collected? And <laughs> you know what I mean? And honestly, I mean, they didn't show it, but it happened in Italy when she was sculpting. Like I was singing baby got back I was whatever I had to do to keep the the vibes and it wasn't just for me like if somebody else got it I'm I'm excited I'm cheering on Michelle you know I'm cheering on Claire like I was just happy to be there and just happen to have a good time and to be honest in Italy I was happy to be out of the damn car because I was tired of driving with our it was smoking like it was like okay we finally got here we're done I'm done driving I don't do this roadblock I'm out of you got it I'm eat a sandwich um but no, like literally, we, we each other's biggest cheerleaders. Even her rappelling down the castle in uh, Dome, they didn't show. But I was like, "Look at that blue booty! Let's go!" Like just having fun, so that way she was having fun with it too. Yeah, because again, yeah. You're cool. You're gonna you're gonna do well. And we're both like very much on the side, just like, "Yep, that's it. Yep, he's doing it right. Okay, great. Come on, <laughs> the whole time." who wants a chisel body there was a lot of like other teams mentally going through it and how you were saying you were like singing and on the sidelines and stuff were you like 
trying to give them any any boost there or it looks like okay they were doing a lot we'll, we'll just let them flounder um, i'm very like tunnel vision when it comes to getting a task done and i even when glenda and lamumba came in and they're like yes guys like they brought up the energy of everybody sculpting because they're just those people um i didn't even look up and say hi you saw like other people like yeah you made it I'm just tunnel vision, hammering the wrong way, but still trying. Um, but <laughs> with them, it was block it out. I, I did not because one, I don't want to be distracted from what I'm doing because of how flustered they are. And two, I, we came off of Italy or Austria. I'm not trying... I'm trying to get us up. <laughs> so I'm not going to take the time. But looking back on it, I'm like... We could have just said one thing like, hey, I'm not a sculptor either. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Maybe something like that could have clicked in her brain. Like, oh, okay. How did how did everybody else get it done? Mm-hmm. Type of thought, but not in the moment. Not in the moment. But I also think Maddie's really efficient. And even looking at when you watch that episode and, and mentally she's efficient too. I don't know if that that's not a dig, but that's just who she, like she's not going to allow a situation to mess up her or whatever she's doing because at the end of the day we have a job to do and that's why our relationship works we're yeah. not gonna get pissed off get it done so we can go mm-hmm. hurry the hell up but you know what i mean so like and again walking into it there was three or four teams in there and we we or she automatically knew that okay well obviously this it must have to be in there like but i think it just depends on like i think when dom walked in she was the last one so she's already flustered about the days you know what i mean yeah. um the day's activities and then to know you're the last and then to see a big white block and you're like, hey, go. And then Michelle kind of was a little shady. When Dom asked, she goes, do we have to carve this? And Michelle goes, yeah. <laughs> That's what you got to do. Caught that. I caught that. And I was like, no one corrected. No. It's, it's a competition at the end of the day. It it's is. Com- it is. And to be honest, like when Dom was having a meltdown, me and Claire were like, it's okay. You're not okay. You're not okay. You know what I mean? No, take a break. Because at the end of the day, if she's slow, we're not going home. So, like, I know it sounds mean, but it, it's all competition. It's all good fun. We still yeah. love them. Like, this- and I knew when I got there too, and they were all working on it. I was like, "There's," I was like, "There's no way anybody's gonna help me. I'm not gonna waste my energy like getting flustered about it. I'm gonna stare at it, and I'm gonna just start figuring it out." And you figure it out pretty quickly. <laughs> like, it was way too detailed for anybody to actually sculpt that (laughs) (laughs) um to step back back to um I think it was Austria so you thought you were going home and um for you Quentin you were crying um until you found out you weren't did you learn anything from that experience moving on to the next legs we are traumatized um and it's, it's weird. We weren't crying because we thought we were going home. We were crying because we were safe. I think that's because we, we, like, we thought we were already out. Because once we saw, got to the map, we saw Rich and Dom. And in the corner, I saw Aubrey and David. I was like, oh, no, we are that team. And to, and to go out that, in, that way was so embarrassing. You know what I mean? Like that. And then to know that that challenge was meant for us to succeed. We left in the first group. We had a yodel challenge. It took everybody multiple tries. Maddie knocked it out real quick. We had a dancing challenge. We knocked it out. Like that was our challenge to win. Um, So when we got there, it was just so frustrating. So it was honestly a big sigh of relief. And that's why the tears happened. Cause I was like, oh my gosh, people are going to watch this and we're embarrassed. Like this is embarrassed. Like we were so embarrassed. That's what it was. Um, And we still talk about it. Like don't do what we did in Austria. Like every leg after that, it was like, okay, we have PTSD. Like, how do we not do what we did in Austria? <laughs> like, we, uh, we went back to our hotel after Austria, and I told Quentin, I said, there is no way we're going to be better next leg and not make these errors unless we write down everything that we did wrong and face all of those mistakes. Because it wasn't just... Like that was the funniest and the biggest blunder because it's like you start and not even 15 minutes into your race, <laughs> you make the wrong choice. <laughs> yeah, uh, there was a lot, a lot in between, a lot on the way there, a lot after the roadblock to the detour. We sat down and made a a list in order of every mistake and what we need to do to rectify that. And if it was a 
a toxic mindset in the moment, what do we need to do? Like we need to allow each other to have a moment, just let it out for a second, but you better come back and get focused again. So we learned a lot from that leg and we tried to keep that mentality of whatever mistakes we make, let's go back, let's go home, reflect and come back better. That's how, that's why Italy and Jordan was so important to us because we were like, no, we are not that team. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You weren't as emotional in France. So if you're comparing the two, why, why was that? Um, they cut it out. (laughs) (laughs) I, after what was said, what was aired, Phil, looks at me and goes, Maddie, I feel like you're holding a lot back. And I was like, I am, Phil. And he was like, well, talk to me about people at home. I was like, don't do that. And then I like look away. I remember I was staring at a dog and I was like, okay, the dog make me happy. Keep me from crying right now. But then I looked back and I started talking about, you know, what it meant to us and our students at home. Cause we're both dance teachers and we, Take, we don't take that lightly, our impact for kids. Like kids look up to us and are inspired by us every single day. And we just wanted to run this race in a way that would inspire them. And that's what got us emotional at the end. Um, and then we walked away and we just sat before our interviews. We sat there for a while and I was still, we were still just letting it out. <laughs> I was pissed. We were sure we were winning. Like there was no if, ands, or buts. We came to win. That's what we wanted to do. It really did seem that way. You guys were talking about how you imagine being there for the last leg. So yeah, um, it was it was the roads again, which we saw already that the French roads <laughs> did the most to another team, a whole accident for you guys. <laughs> For some reason, you got stuck. I I do not know the purpose of those cement things and having that. So please explain what what was going on there. We were in a shopping mall. We, uh, okay, so forks in the road. Theme of our race, okay? There's a fork and... You could bend to the right. So our strategy with, if you didn't know which way to go, try a road. This is on side streets. Try a road. If it doesn't work out, you can usually circle back, go back to that same point and then try the other one, Mm -hmm. right? So we got to this fork in the road and it bent to the right. If we went down that way, within five minutes, we would have gotten to where the detour parking was. But then we decided, let's just try this. If it doesn't work, we'll come back. That was that was a fatal error <laughs> because we drive in and those barricades, when we drove in, there was one set that were down. So we drove right through it. Then as soon as we drove through it, they went up behind us. <laughs> and so now we're stuck, people crossing. Like it, it's a full mall. We pull forward, there's a McDonald's on my left. And people are dining outside, looking at our car with the camera people and two stressed out Americans just laughing, having a ball at our expense. And then we pull up and there's barricades in front of us and we don't know how to get them down. So then that's where you see me get out of the car. But that took a while because we were so confused where we were and how did we get here? Mm -hmm. And when you have no concept of that, it's very frightening (laughs) like the claustrophobia of having all those people just walking in front of us Mm -hmm. that was a lot of panic I remember as soon as we got out and then we went around this roundabout which was like the exit of the mall we could finally breathe again just because we got out we didn't we still didn't know where we were but we just could breathe (laughs) right that's when I got pulled over so you did reveal on Twitter that you got pulled over and we didn't get to see it. So can I hear that story? Yes. The stress. Um, so it was after finally we we just finished the roadblock. We uh got into the town uh, where the Couvent de Jacobins is. Uh this is right after we got stuck in those break like barricades. Um Ugh. 
we're class it's it's we're stressed we like there's people walking around just bikes and we're like okay i just need to get out of here so once we finally get out i guess i ran a red light um and i say i guess because i still don't believe it but i know i guess cops are right but i i was next to a car the whole time so i was like if they ran it then i ran it so well, what the heck um yeah was pulled over by a very cute french policeman he decided to uh explain that in america you can do that but in france you cannot so then he asked us for our international permits and everything and the funniest part of that was when maddie uh he's running our plates and stuff and she goes well while you're back there can you tell us where this place is <laughs> on the map and i was like that was literally wow. the highlight of that whole day because it was hilarious because <laughs> Yeah, she did. Well, can you laugh? It's funny because it's like it was funny. Like we laughed and we're like, "Oh my gosh!" Like I can't believe you did that. But in the moment, I was so serious too because I was like, "He's a cop. He should know these streets. He would know exact. He could probably turn on his lights and lead us there if we weren't if we were allowed to be led." But that's a rule. You can't do that. Oh, but I was like, "He knows," and it was a serious question. But it was looking back, it was funny too. <laughs> Got him to laugh. I think you that question, Maddie, got us out of that ticket. Yeah, totally. Okay, he so wanted to, he almost gave him a ticket. Like he was grilling Q, like asking how long we've been here. But then there's a language barrier. So Quentin is like, oh, two days. And he's like, two years. And we're like, no, we just we're we're on TV. Look, there's camera. But it was it, he took his time. He told us red no green go oh like full lesson <laughs> yeah i'm sure okay now i'm just curious of like what even happens when you get a ticket in another country for amazing race i send it to you after no yeah so but they were very they were very adamant like we like whoever's driving you are in charge like this is it's it's a car like yeah like, there's a moment where like it was off camera but I, I hit a pillar with my side mirror um but good thing it was off camera but <laughs> a little bit I think Michelle got a ticket didn't she I think she had a speeding ticket wow. they send it to her yeah. and she was like did anybody else get this is this real and it was it was it was a uh, I think it was in, in it was it Italy or was Italy. It? Okay. Or, yeah. I, I don't know that's wild. Um, yeah, my other question for you guys as people with dance experience, can you rank from easiest to hardest the dance challenges you did? Yep. Easiest is Austria, hardest was Jordan. I'm on. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay, the um, ballroom dancer said the th same thing. So what is it? No, it was the salsa dancers. Um, a lot of dancers this season <laughs> but what is it about the Jordan dance that's like so takes you out of your element um it our problem wasn't the music I know it was for some of the other teams was finding the beat that wasn't really our issue I think our issue was um like our instructor wasn't very clear on the things that they were looking for mm -hmm. and it showed us getting it in our first try but in our first tr our actual first try um what way we were supposed to face was hard because in the on the austria dance we were connected the whole time mm -hmm. and there was a very clear front but when we were doing the partner dance we're facing each other and we're dancing around each other and we're flipping directions so the first time we ended, we were facing the band, not outwards. <laughs> Said we were confused. We we're like, I th I think we we're facing the. This is how we learned it. But <laughs> you're always supposed to face the audience, of course. Um, so I think that's what made it hard was the directional shifts. Um, some teams wanted to run their own race, but you weren't against working with other teams. You worked with Louis and Michelle multiple times. How did that? relationship um form it started to be honest when we were in la in the sequestered uh moment before the show and we can't speak everybody has a ma uh, mask on they're going through all the rules and everything so everybody's stressed everybody's kind of dressed still everybody looks good fresh cut everything um and we got in the elevator with them and i think they were our, our uh hotel neighbors 
And again, we can't speak. And I looked at Michelle and I and she gave me like a little like <laughs> under the knot. And I looked at Maddie and I said, I like them already. Like <laughs> and literally it was that moment, like every little like second we got we were able to kind of chat and like throw in a hey, we always had to do it. And then once we got onto the like the chartered planes, that's when it was kind of like, oh yeah, we're friends. Like we all, and then we explained like life experiences and like how she was a dancer, I'm a dancer, like we're a dancer, like how it just all and she also underplayed her story, but I'll let her tell you that. Um mm. yeah, she has a lot of accolades. But uh I don't I don't think like our friendship got in the way of was was a factor in the competition part though because like we just liked them as people and when we came together on the race was not out of like oh we're friends and let me find my friends to help me with this it was we finished the challenge at the same time mm -hmm. we are not fighting for first and second right now it would make sense we're on our eighth hour of the day <laughs> let's team up together and finish out strong Nine. in in Amman, it was all on foot and it's funny that everybody naturally kind of gravitated towards like having one other team mm -hmm. with them everybody was kind of partnered up we only came together with Lewis and Michelle because we both went to ask the same person for directions. Mm -hmm. And so I kind of like looked at Lewis, like, this is my person. <laughs> and, and Lewis is like, you want to work together? I'm like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> that might be no, I mean, I, I think. Stay with them either. Sorry. No, oh, no, you're good. I just said we didn't stay with them either because once we yeah. we set the expectations once we got to the dance challenge we're like okay whoever gets it first like good luck we got this mm -hmm. yeah and it is sad um not what? against not running your own race I think you can I think at the end of the day if you're racing for first absolutely I'm not I'm not helping you out even when it gets tighter, when they're like, you know what I mean? Even when we get to like the, the top sixes, you know, no, I'm not really working with you. And you know what I mean? That's just mm -hmm. what it is because everybody's so close. But I think, yeah, run your own race, but you're also like, we're going to have fun too. And <laughs> four brains are better. I mean, think about it just logically. Four brains are better than two. And in this case, in that case, we were traveling all day in Italy. I felt like we had half a brain each. So I was like, you know what? Let's just, let's just do it together. And it worked out. Um, it. got it you were one of the teams we saw the least so I am curious is there anything else that we missed of your journey that you want to talk about with me everything Ugh. everything everything um we can be the funny talks. ones and not show us that we're funny yeah we, can, we can't I be the funny it. ones and not show us that we're the, like, like I'm confused our outfits stop it okay stop it let's talk about the pattern because it looked like what matching leopard like thank you for noticing the details <laughs> so why why that pattern i was curious <laughs> we wanted well we had we got our stuff that was cleared for the league um mm -hmm. that we can wear and i was like well maddie this isn't really good on me but then everything that worked like okay well this tank top looks good on us this one looks good and can we have like a fun random outfit so let's do black and like a pop of something and i was like i have this headband she's like well i have these blue leggings and like and mind you we overpacked like i think at the beginning of the race we had like 10 things we had to ship it all but i was like nope get rid of it like and i still struggled like i was like no i, I think i'm gonna need those at some point like, <laughs> like my out, of was definitely toiletries, out of all of his toiletries he had like like three full bags and they weighed a lot. Like his, his backpack when we first got there was 40 pounds. That is way too heavy. So he goes through his skincare, his toiletries, and he goes, well, the one thing I could maybe give up is my wrinkle spray. But Maddie, if there's no irons in the hotel room, I'm going to be mad at you. And I'm like, throw it away then. And then we get to the next place. No iron. He goes, no hey. iron. Hold you. <laughs> This is real. This is real stuff. Like you can't really, you can't make this up. Like, yes, we're on the race. Yes, 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 yes. I understand. If I can carry it in my back, I would. If it's not hurting me. I wear a backpack every day. Like I'm fine. You know what I mean? Like this is life. I but wish people just got to see like, like the things that we talked about because when it came to actually competing we love competing so there's nothing that's going to take us away from like having that as the priority so in between we just had such a funny time we were never arguing about like maps or anything we were just telling stories we were we would argue about 
when we got to the castle in France, it was called a fortified castle. So we had a full debate on what the word fortified meant. <laughs> and just things like that. It's like, <laughs> so fortified, I think means like refurbished or something. But fortified is also a term that they use in food, like pasteurized and fortified. It's a thing. So we had a full debate in our car about the definition of fortified. And I was like, well, I know milk can be fortified. And Quinn's like, I ain't never had fortified milk. I don't know <laughs> what you're talking about. <laughs> Those things. Like, I would have loved to see our conversations put next to the same conversation at the same time in another car. <laughs> yes. Yes. Like, so, Marcus, Marcus, like car, complacency, <laughs> attitude, whatever. <laughs> like, what are you talking about? Like, what do you want to wear tomorrow? <laughs> <laughs> How's the back you look good. <laughs> I will say, I think the sense of humor came across. Like, I'm still always going to think of you putting together, like, the wooden um, cart. And you're, like, stretching. You're like, this is what being a dancer. Like, <laughs> like oh, my God. With the with the face, the cheesy face. <laughs> and his <laughs> wings. And, and, like, it wasn't even funny. I think you were just really good at doing the rugby challenge. Like, I was like... This is great. This you were is stressed, our- stressed. There was no, there was no time. I was like, oh my gosh, yeah. we have to go. We have to go. Yeah, Let's I wasn't, go. I wasn't stressed decisions. at the roadblock at all. Watching him do it. You saw me. I was literally leaning back. You guys looked so at home. Like, at this point, it's getting old that we're good at challenges. It's getting freaking old. <laughs> that sounds cocky, but you know what I oh, mean. But it's back, so not Mark is taking seven tries. I said, seven tries. And I'm like, yeah, we're going to get it. And he gets it. (laughs) And everybody's so like, oh, they can't really do anything with it or whatever. The brothers are so great. And I'm like, yeah, they're fun. Whatever, whatever. But give us our credit, too. Mm -hmm. Because there's there's not one challenge that we did more than four times. But that's how you get the camera time, I guess. I don't know. I mean, I can get (laughs) (laughs) I want to be a challenge beast, not beast. That's true. That's true. I think there are a lot of theories of why you guys were left out of the screen time. Uh, do you want to give what your theories are? Oh, give me your are? theories. I want to know your theories. Um, I don't know. Well, I listen to podcasts, right? Because this is literally the first time I watched Amazing Race. So I'm a newbie. Oh, wow. um, so when I was listening to a podcast, they were like, they love couples. They just love couples. And oh. they're not a romantic couple. And I was like, okay, that makes sense. But then it's like they love, I think they love the siblings, like the the um twin girls that were separated, they have a great story. That makes sense. There's also drama, the leg. That's always a thing. It's like, when is that leg gonna give out? We don't know. Yeah. <laughs> so I think it's like a little bit of like where the drama is. And maybe if you guys didn't have any drama, like you said, you were doing pretty good on the challenges. You were you seem to have an upbeat demeanor, so there's not like tension there. I don't know. Yeah. Maybe that's the theory, but I didn't know if you guys had your own. <laughs> My thought was that we're the only we're the first season where start to finish was um planned around COVID. So uh, the the planes, the chart, you know, we did a chartered plane rather than going to the airport and finding flights. We didn't have any taxis or ferries or anything aside from self-driving and then on foot <laughs> or that in Jordan, we had a driver. Right. So a lot of the stress of travel was taken out of it. There was a, there's the self-driving that is its own stressor. But I think like getting to an airport and there's eight other couples and who's going to get the best flights that they used to spend a lot of time on that. And that's completely not in the race anymore as of right now. So uh, with this new format, I feel that the editing has been very task heavy. I don't think in general, they've shown a lot of car drama. Like they've shown the highlights, you know, like Glenda and Lumumba crashing their car, but they didn't, they didn't spend that much time really on it Mm -hmm. and unfortunately for us that's where we were 70 percent of the time was in the car (laughs) because once we got to the challenge we were in and out of the challenge right so I don't know 
I don't know, but that would be my thought is that it's very task heavy and we're not at the tasks for very long. And we also never want a leg too. <laughs> yeah, I think that was the other theory is that you guys were the middle of the pack. So it's like we pay a lot of attention to who's at the front and who's lagging because there's probably a lot of mistakes. But if you're in the middle, it's probably easier to get lost in the shuffle. But even when we were in the last, we were in the back of the pack for the last two legs. And ah, uh, of France, we were in the front of it. And they still, they didn't give us the, you know what I mean? We should have been that whole entire episode. Like people don't like, I was reading blogs and they don't know what happened to us. And we, uh, one, did don't know what happened to us in Petra. They didn't say it. They don't know what happened to us getting from Castle to Walnuts. They don't show it. They just, we just show up. You know what I mean? Like, there's no, like, everybody else gets like, oh, I was stuck behind a tractor or, oh, I'm a... Uh, we went into you know the mean? parking I'm, garage. <laughs> went into a parking garage. Like, didn't, it's literally a, there at the challenge. Okay, another back. Okay, cool. Check in. And I'm like, oh my okay. Gosh. The, yeah. the, on the way, this last leg, they didn't, this was like a small blip on the radar of that day. But on our way to the stadium, we did pull off and stop. And Quentin chose the worst spot to pull over. A spot where there is no, like, very rural. Nobody, like, a very local business. Nobody spoke English. We asked a guy to use his phone. He didn't have service. He didn't have internet. Mm. So we, and and then we sat there for like 10 minutes with this guy writing directions. And then I was like, okay, so it's taking us here. Like, this is the directions. He wrote it out. And he goes, no, it's to this stadium. This stadium is better. And I was like, we have to go here. I didn't ask your opinion. Right. <laughs> that was when I had to find the dumpster to pee behind. Oh, yeah. That was <laughs> I, I was like, we're gonna cry that yeah, that because we can't be more than 20 feet away from each other and i was like quentin's peeing behind a dumpster and they said go run by it so you're next i had to stand thanks to him. i i did not know about this rule that's wild yeah yeah everybody has to be in the same shot you know what i mean so 20 feet okay it's not as not as close as you think not as far as you think Okay. But even though that was a very much like, you're not going to air this. Like, he has to pee. <laughs> <laughs> they were like, but still stand close to him. It's like, okay. They, that was like backup. They're like, sure, it's it's not going to be included. But it's like, we have nothing else. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> I don't know. I, I try to think about what those producers are thinking. Oh, my last really question. Are you guys going to give Pete and anything else together? Very curious. Uh, what? Compete in anything else together. Oh, I hope so. Yep. I mean, I feel like this 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 season was really hard because I feel like it this was a really tough cast to hate some hate, hate people. Um, so if they ever did an all stars, yes, I want it, but I know there's there's like five other teams that I know, ooh, it'll be a tough competition. <laughs> or like a second this. chance. They've done like a second chance season before. And I think, you know, we didn't have any limit. We didn't have any non eliminations. So there is a good reason to have people from that season, our season, have a second chance kind of season. I would love that. I would love to compete with Quentin again. We had so much fun. I would do it all over right now. Even like the challenge, like ride or die, is like that would have been fun. I was like, oh, that would have been dope. Like, challenges, goals. Like, yeah. let's do it. Heck yeah.